for sure. Yeah. And, and you opening up Chris like that and telling them that, now they know they can open up to you. Maybe they're not, maybe they're suffering from something or, you know, don't want to like, you know, I think all three of us have had some anxiety things and, you know, I used to not tell people I hit it. Like I was in relationships where I hit it. Nobody knew my kids didn't know, but as soon as I was okay, talking about it, it made me feel better, you know, like it's, and that's what prompted that video that I posted. It's okay. Not to be okay. That was because of Chris and a conversation we had, like, you know, he's like, I got to pretend that I'm okay in front of my students. And it's what he said. No, you don't. You don't have to pretend. We don't yeah. want, you know. Yeah, we don't want you to pretend. And no. pretending just builds it up, man. It just puts more stuff on your shoulders that you already don't want there. It yeah. already puts more stuff inside your mind that, you, that doesn't belong <clears throat> there. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you belong here and all that other stuff doesn't belong there. <laughs> Absolutely, man. When you get in those those moments, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I dude, I go off and, and like I struggle with with like I'm very passionate about like like every emotion I have. So like when I'm sad, it's sad. When I'm happy, I'm happy. When I'm yeah. mad, I'm, I'm uh, but I'm I'm so passionate and I have such a big heart. And like when I get in these these times like this, man, I come home and it, it's dark for me. And it's almost like my mind convinces me shit that's not real if that mm. makes sense mm-hmm. yeah it does for sure like my mind like your your mind starts kind of like talking bad to you talking bad about you you know things like that like and it's just like nobody loves you no one cares <clears throat> you're not you can't do this you can't do that and sean north told me this like i i took like a little um vacation and and showed like my son like where i like used to train and stuff when i lived in ohio and I was talking to Sean North and he was like, yeah, man. He was like, you were so talented and you would get so close. He was like, but it's almost like you wouldn't let yourself win because you didn't think that you deserved to be there. He was like, and, and you still, you know what I mean? And now I'm trying to get over that now. You know what I mean? At sure. 35, I'm still like, I'm at the end of my career of any career. You know what I mean? Like how many, I'm not getting UFC money fighting. You know, the UFC ain't going to call me at 35. Like, <laughs> right. wanna, you know what I mean, Mr. One and Two Black Belt, you want to come, you know, butt scoot in the UFC? Sure. <laughs> sure. It's not, that's not going to happen, you know, but I do want to fight again. I do, I do still have that drive. And it's because I like, I've earned that, you know, and yeah, I, I'm tired of telling myself that I don't deserve that, you know, if that makes sense. No, yeah, it makes a hundred percent sense. Like, I mean, I would tell you as a, as a friend and, and, you know, fellow jujitsu practitioner, like, you know, the world itself is going to project whatever it wants to project on you. And it's easier said than done, but understand that you belong like Chris, you belong mm-hmm. here, man. You belong doing what you're doing and look at the amount of people that you've changed in that amount of time that you've been doing it. Like you're a black belt. You're going to go be a doctor now? No, because you're a black belt. You've already done doctor status. You've already put your time in. You've already done that. But like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And and it's that you know we've all helped people. Chris, you've helped people. But look what you've done for yourself. That's yeah. that's where it's that's where it starts. Like you know, you said you know we've talked about dark times and things you've come back from. So man, that's 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 huge, huge dude. You didn't huge. quit. You didn't yeah. quit. You may have wanted to at times and you struggled through that. We all do. Everyone that ever, everyone that's listening to this show right now has had some kind of adversity struggle in their life, whether they want to admit it or not. But yeah. you fought through it the entire time. And you're sitting right here talking to us in September on a podcast about jujitsu, man. So that's <laughs> huge. That's a huge thing. Like you have a son and you're still teaching people, you have students. So you're teaching me right now. I'm uh, like I said, I'm young in my jujitsu career. So it's like my journey, whatever I befriend as many people as I can on this show. So, uh, Hey man, we're, we're friends now. And <laughs> listen, man, like the, the thing, like the thing that does touch me the most is like the whole time that I felt like that I couldn't talk about it. And like, it was eating at me and eating at me. Like if I would have just said something. Yeah. I could, and and still to this day, I still need to listen. If I would just say something rather than like letting it build up and come out as like this anger outburst or like build up and come out as like, you know, the the whole 2017 event, like just just, if I would have just said something, you know, like you got to talk, you got to say something, you got to 
hold that shit in and like Patty Pimlet said, you know, like he, yeah, I rather, I rather you have tears on my shoulder than me being carrying you at a funeral. Mm -hmm. For sure. And it's up to guys like us that have gone through stuff to continuously talk about it openly, freely, 